Okay, so now we'll be looking at the second index law, which involves dividing um, variables and numbers, and to see what happens with the uh, indices or the powers um, when we divide. So we'll look at index law one just quickly to start us off. So just to recap, if we have x to the power of 5 times, so the first index law involved multiplication, times x to the power of 3. Um, we learned that when we multiply and we have the same base, so in this case x and x, it's the same thing. Um, so x will, will remain in our answer. The only thing changing are our powers. And with this law, we learned that we have to add the powers. So we would simply go 5 plus 3 to give us 8. And that would be our answer. Now, with this index law, instead of multiplication, we will be oops, sorry, we will be dividing. Okay? Um, and we'll use the same example. So x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 3. Okay. Now, a way to remember this is multiplication and division, they are opposite operations. So if we had to add the powers when we multiplied, that means we have to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. So we have to simply take away the powers. So once again, the base stays the same, x won't change, but the powers will. But instead of adding, with this index law, if we're dividing, we simply go 5, take away 3 to give us 2. And that will be our answer. Um, and that's that's the index law. Um, now, it does get a bit more complicated, but for now, let's do another example. So I'll just clear the page. All right, so let's try, a, I guess, a harder one. Um, if we have a to the power of 7 and b to the power of 5 and c to the power of 2, okay, um, divided by, so our operation is, our, is division, and we'll put a to the power of 5 on this side, b to the power of 3, and c. Now remember, if there's no power visible, we know it's a 1. Okay, so equals. Um, so when you have more than one variable, um, more than one thing to work with, just work with one thing at a time. So I'll just start off with my a, because a is first. So I've got a to the power of 7 and a to the power of 5 on this side. So there's something on both sides, so I have to calculate something. Um, because my operation is division, I know I have to subtract the powers. So if I um, get my a ready and 7, take away 5 is 2, so a to the power of 2, and that's my answer. And if this helps, you can cross off um, the variables you've used, and so you, you don't get confused. If that helps, so you can do that. Our next variable, we've got b to the power of 5 and b to the power of 3. So 5, take away. So I'll put a take, up, take away sign up here to remind me. 5 take away 3 is um, 2 also. So I've got b to the power of 2. Um, and that's gone. And my last variable, I've got c to the power of 2 and a c there. Now remember, the invisible power, when we can't see it, is a 1. So I'll be going 2 take away the 1, and 2 take away 1 is just 1, so I'll just squeeze it in here, so I've got c to the power of 1. Now, remember, remember the power is invisible, so I'm not going to write it this time, um, and that will be my answer. Alright, so let's try another one um, where we have numbers involved. So if we have, for example, 8, and then we'll put a y, try and use different variables, different letters, um, y to the power of 6, um, divided by 4 and y to the power of um, 2. Okay, so when we have numbers, we do the exact same thing um, like we do with normal division and simply go, what is 8 divided by 4? Well, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So if we can, if we know what the numbers are, okay, 8 and 4, we simply divide it normally. And if you remember the first index law, if it was times here, we'd be going 8 times 4. So we just divide these. Um, and I can cross it off because I've done that. And then once again, y to the power of 6 and y to the power of 2, we're dividing, so my base will stay the same. And because I'm dividing, 6 take away 2 um, is simply 4. So y to the power of 4. And 
Sorry, <laughs> that's my answer. Um, so now we're going to look at this index law in a different way because we know division can be written in fraction form. So I'll just clear the page. So for example, if I have x to the power of, um, we'll say, 5 um, divided by x to the power of 3, yes, we now know we simply go 5, take away 3, so my answer will be x to the power of 2. That's nice and easy. But we can also rewrite this in fraction form. So if I have x to the power of 5 and um, and I want to write it in fraction form, well, we know that this division symbol can be written like that. So the vinculum, this line here, we know it represents a fraction, but it also means to divide. And so x to the power of 5, x to the power of 5, divided by, divided by, x to the power of um, 3. Okay, um, and we now do the same thing. Um, we always subtract from top to bottom. So just like here, I'd be going 5, take away 3, or here I'll be going 5, take away 3 to give me x to the power of 2. But another way to, to look at this that's important um, and that we'll need to use is sort of take out the factors. For example, if I've got um, x to the power of 3 on the bottom and x to, to, to the power of 5 on top, I can look at it as though I have 3x's on the bottom and 5x's on top which means if I take away 3 from the bottom, which is my smallest amount, I can't take away more. So I can only take away 3 from the bottom. And what we do to the bottom, we must do to the top. That means I've got to take away uh, 3 x's from here. So 5 take away um, 3 would leave me with 2. Okay. Now, we don't cross it off and put a 0. It's actually a 1. And when we look at the index law that involves the power zero, that will make more sense. But for now, we'll just cross it off and put a one because there's nothing on the bottom now. On top, we are left with x to the power of two. On the bottom, it's just a whole number one. Now, we can leave it like this, but we know that that one on the bottom can be invisible. So we're left with x to the power of two. So we've got the same answer, just using a different method. And this method is quite important. Um, so I'll just clear the page and we'll do another example. All right, so if I have, um, we'll put some more variables, a to the power of 3, b to the power of 6, and c over a to the power of 2, b to the power of um, 4, and I'll just chuck a c there. All right, so we, are, we have the same thing. It's division, but in fraction form. And we'll leave our answer in fraction form um, if possible. So once again, start with one thing at a time. I am saying 3 take away 2, but I can also do it this way. Take away 2 a's from the bottom. Take away 2 a's from the top. So a to the power of 1 is what I'll be left with. Um, with the b's, I've got 4 b's on the bottom and 6 on top. So I can't take away 6 because I haven't got 6 on the bottom but the maximum I can take out is the smallest amount, which is 4. So take away 4 from there. Remember, this is, this is all a 1 now. But 6 take away 4, 6 b take away 4 is simply 2 b's, or b to the power of 2, squeeze it in there. Um, and c, remember we have a 1 there and a 1 there, so I can take away 1 from here and take away 1 from there, and they're gone, or have become a 1. So what I'm left with is, one, so we remember that there is multiplication in between our variables, so there's times everywhere. So I'm saying one times one times one, which is just one. I've got a to the power of one, or just a, um, and b squared, or b to the power of two, and my c's are gone, they just become a one, and one times this is just one, and we know there's an invisible one there. Um, and to write it as our final answer, we would have a, and then b squared where the one, this bit here, has become invisible. Um, now let's try one with some numbers. Now if we have, for example, um, let's see, we'll do 5, we've got 10, we've got x to the power of 10 and x to the power of 3, just say. Okay, now with an example like this, the numbers we 
simply simplify like our normal fractions. So if I take out 5 over 10 on its own as a, as a, as a the fraction, um, all we have to do is divide this or simplify this by dividing by the same highest factor. So for example, um, the highest factor of 5 and 10, I would divide them both by 5, divide by 5, and I'll be left with 1 over uh, 2, so half. So we'll be doing the exact same thing um, with this, but just remember that the 2 is on the bottom, and it will always stay on the bottom. It's very important. We don't have, for example, 10 over 5. If we had 10 over 5, we'd simply end up with 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Or if we divide them both by 5, we'd have 2 over 1, which will give us a whole number 2. And we can see that a half and a 2 are very different numbers. Okay? So, with this, we'll go back to this example. So it doesn't confuse us. Um, so simplify 5 and 10, divide it by 5 to 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2, okay? So my 1 is on top and my 2 is on the bottom. It's very important, 2 is on the bottom. And then with the variables, well, I've got 3 x's on the bottom and I've got 10 on top, so I can take away 3 from the bottom, which becomes a 1, and I can take away, then I have to take away 3 from the top. So 10 take away 3 is 7, so I'm left with x to the power of 7. So I have x to the power of 7 on top. And I'm done. Now, that 1, it's saying 1 times x to the power of 7. So the proper way to, to write our final answer is x to the power of 7 divided by, or over 2. So that's 2. And that will be our answer. Okay. So we'll try another example. Um, and this time, we'll be looking at We'll see what happens when we have, um, we may end up with negative powers. So, for example, if I have x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 5. Okay, now remember, I can't go 5 take away 3 to give me 2. It's from this side to that side. So, with division, we know we take away our powers. Um, now, be careful because we'll end up with a negative number or a negative power. Because 3 take away 5 is actually negative 2. And that would be our answer. Now, we haven't learned the negative index law where we can change negative powers um, for, and they can become positive. So we'll, we haven't learned that skill yet. So at this stage, we will leave it like this. But it's very important to remember that I can also write this problem in fraction form x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 5. Same thing. And we'll have a look and see what answer we get for this one. All right, so I'm going to have an infraction form. So doing it this way, I'm going to take away 3 from the top and 3 x's from the bottom. I can't take away any more because I only have 3 on top. Okay, so take away 3 x's from there. I'm left with 1. And then 5 take away 3 is x to the power of 2. And so what I'll end up with is 1 over x to the power of 2. Now, these answers, they do look different, but they are actually actually the same. And we will be using this example later on in the um, learning when, when we learn the negative index power. So keep this in mind. Even though they do look different, they are actually the same same thing. Because if we have a look at the question, the questions are exactly the same. That means the answers have to be equal. And we will be using this example to figure out how a negative power can be turned into a positive. And you can sort of see what's happened. The x to the power of negative 2 has ended on the bottom and become positive. So just have a think about, uh, about what's happened. But it will be in our next lesson. All right, so we'll try another example. And that will probably be it for this lesson, because it's already 15 minutes. All right, so um, let's try sort of a, a big juicy one with a few numbers and things like that. So we'll have 16, whoops, sorry, it's getting crooked. All right, so two over 16, well, I'll clear it and start again, sorry. All right, so try again. So two over 16, put in some variables, a to the power of seven, b to the power of five, c to the power of 2, and on the bottom we'll put, 
some numbers. Could be eight and a C. Okay, so we have it in fraction form. We know this means division, but we are going to simplify leaving it in fraction form. And I'll squeeze my answer on the bottom because I don't think I'll fit it there. So work with one thing at a time. Numbers, two over 16, we simplify it. Divide it by two. We divide it by two. Sorry, it's not working. Using our fraction skills. So two divided by two, I'm left with a one. 16 divided by two is a, and that's done. Now remember, there is times in between everything. Okay? All right, and now, We've got a to the power of seven, so seven a's on top, 10 on the bottom. I can only take away seven from the top, so that will be gone, and so it becomes a one. 10 take away seven, I'm left with a to the power of three, so three a's in the bottom. So I can write it down now so I don't forget it. All right, my b's, I've got five b's on top and eight on the bottom. I can take away five from the top. That's the maximum amount. What I do to the top, I must do to the bottom, so eight take away, Five. I'm left with three b's on the bottom, or b cubed. And last of all, I've got c. So two c's on top and one on the bottom. So I can take away, so remember there's a one here. So I can only take away one from the bottom, it's gone. And two take away one is oh, c, or just c to the power of one. And that is on top. Okay? Um, and remember, 1 times C is just C, so our final answer, the proper way, will look like this. Um, 8, A to the power of 3, or A and B cubed. So we can say to the power of 3, or we can say cubed. And that will be it. And it's very important that whatever's supposed to be on the bottom, any leftovers on the bottom, stay on the bottom. Anything on top, stays on the top. That's very important. All right, so just practice more questions from your textbook. Um, and yeah, it should be okay. Thank you.